Welcome back, Hever. It's exciting to be able to open up this new topic within our limud, within our, within our study. And the truth is, is that at this point within the Chabur, for those of you that have been with us through and through, we've reached a point, we've reached a point, Be'ezus Hashem, Be'ezus Hashem, where we've been able to clear away, clear away, hopefully clear away unhealthy beliefs, unhealthy beliefs that we may have about work, unhealthy beliefs that we may have about money, and hopefully, hopefully to be able to open up a mindset and an experience in our day-to-day -day work of experiencing satisfaction, of experiencing joy, of experiencing deep meaning, and experiencing abundance. The question is, is that once you've been on this program, once you've been on this program, you've become a work-inspired Jew, a work-inspired Jew. Is that enough? Is it enough just to be a work-inspired Jew that everything is just going to be almei menuchais, Everything is going to be full of peace, always. So the truth is, is that we know from experience, we know from experience, and it's been spoken about, it's spoken about, research has been done about this phenomenon called burnout, burnout. And the World Health Organization, it's a very fascinating definition. What does it mean? Because, because we need to have definitions. <laughs> of, uh, what does it mean to, if you see someone and he's burnt out? He's burnt out from his job. So the first definition that they give, right, is that when a person starts to experience exhaustion, it right, just finds himself to be tired. You know, I know myself personally, you know, when you start having coffee hour numerous times a day, or coffee hour becomes happy hour, right? Every single day, every single hour you find yourself over there trying to keep yourself awake. Even if you've had a good night's sleep, you just constantly are finding yourself to be exhausted. Right, the second definition that they give is negativity, right? That even if you're a positive person, right? Even if you're a negative person, you just find yourself in more of a pattern, right? Of having a negative outlook, right? When it comes to work, right? When it comes to that boss, when it comes to that coworker, when it comes to that client, when it comes to that deadline, just find yourself perhaps complaining to your spouse a bit more, to your best friend a bit more, right? Just venting, you're just finding yourself in this energy, in this, in this energy of negativity when it comes to work. And the third definition, right, that the World Health Organization gives for the experience of burnout is poor performance. Poor performance when a person finds themselves, right, finds themselves, whether or not they work for themselves, right, and they're working for a client, and they just see that the work that they're doing is just not on par. It's not on par with the regular quality of that which they're putting out for other people, right? Or if you're and you're an employee and you're getting called out, right, by your manager, a supervisor, you know, what's going on, right? I can see that you're showing up late where I can see that you've missed the deadline, and there's a drop in performance. So, so these three things, these three we would call you know, symptoms, is what the World Health Organization defines as the burnt out experience. The question is, and this we're going to be exploring more in depth as we continue through this chabura, right, is that why does burnout happen? Where does it come from? So on the most basic level, right, and this we've spent time, this we've spent time going through, if a person's beliefs about work in general, right, is counterproductive, right, they believe that what they're doing is worthless, right, they believe that what they're doing is a bidiyevit, right, they wish that they weren't there and it's something that they have to do, that itself, right, could be a reason why a person could be experiencing burnout, right, or if a person's in the wrong job, right, a person's in a job that they hate, Right? It could be that the job once upon a time was a good fit for them, right? but now it's become a mismatch for their skills, it's become a mismatch for their work style. That also could cause a person to be experiencing burnout. Right? If a person doesn't know how to relate to stress, right? we've spoken about this in the Chabura at length, right? we know that built into the work experience that we spent numerous chaburas on, right, is this reality of the fact that there is going to be the unknown, there's going to be the unexpected, right, and if a person's response to that, right, is going to be stress, is going to be anxiety, right, we spoke about stress as well, right, we had the opportunity to sit with Rabbi Gerzi a few times, and we've learned how to be able to approach stressful situations, right, if we can call them that, but if a person doesn't have those tools, that, it, that itself can cause a person to be experiencing burnout. And if a person doesn't know how to be productive, 
right? A person doesn't know themselves. They don't have the self-awareness to be able to know what is my work style? What is the type of environment right, that I function best in? Right? Do I function best working um, in a cubicle? Do I function best working in a big office space? Right? Do I function best working during the day? Do I function best working at night? If a person doesn't understand their own keys, right, their own keys for productivity, that could cause a person to feel and experience burnout as well. But even if a person has that all clear, right, he's been through the Chabura through with us, and not just heard the Shi'urim, but you spent the time investing in the exercises and the Avodas to be able to work on these areas, there's still a reality, there's still a reality that a person, right, a person, and not just a person, but me, okay, perhaps you or someone you know, could experience this burnout, this burnout at some point within the job, even that job that you like. So what's the solution? So the World Health Organization suggests, and we find this, right? this creation, right, of something called vacation, right, to take a vacation, right, take a vacation, right, we know by law, you know, we even find, you know, mandated, you know, certain vacation days, depending on where you live, right, there's the minimum, right, and then afterwards you can negotiate vacation days, but we know that there's something called vacation, and the experts say that if you have vacation, everything will work out, you'll come back to work feeling more refreshed, than ever. Okay, so we all know that doesn't always happen. But before we get there, before we get there, the question is, as Yidin, as from Jews, people that believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we have the Torah as our guide, is this what we say is the solution? What do we say about this idea of vacation? Perhaps we don't need it. No, we, Hashem separated us from the Goyim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us Shabbos. What more do we need if we have Shabbos? Right? Shabbos is Yom Manucha. Right? If a person perhaps is someone who doesn't just keep Shabbos, but somebody who lives with Shabbos, somebody who really experiences Shabbos and he's able to experience Manucha, perhaps we don't need vacation. And Kal V'chomer, Shabbat Kal V'chomer, a person who, who lives in a country you know, where he has Shabbos and Sunday, and Sunday. You know, here in Eretz Israel, I always just make the joke, you know, if I only had Sunday, you know, then my life would differ. Everything would be okay if I only had Sunday. I recently had a conversation with someone who told me what really happens on Sunday. I told him, no, no, shh, shh, don't tell me. I like to still believe and tell myself that if I had Shabbos and Sunday, wow, you know, that would be a big game changer. That would be a, a big game changer. So perhaps we have Sunday, and we have Shabbos Kodesh, perhaps, perhaps we don't need vacation. We don't believe in this idea of vacation. But whether or not you believe in it, whether or not you celebrate it, the reality is, is that we're living in a culture where vacation has become part of our culture. And even, not just within Western culture, but within the Jewish culture, right? We have this idea of vacation. It's built into our education system. Right, it's built into our cycle of the year. You know, as, as from Yidin, we've adapted a whole entire vacation market. We've done a very good job. Glot, kosher, the Mahadran, Shal Mahadran vacation programs. But what we want to discuss over here in the Chabura, and it's a fascinating, and it's really a schus, it's really an opportunity, I thank each one of you, right, for us to be able to sit and to go through this together, because for many people it's not even something they think is a discussion. For us to be able to discover together, is the idea of vacation a firm idea? What do we believe about vacation? And I would say is that without a conversation like this, the Bezos Hashem, the Siyat HaDashmai we're gonna to have together, I would say that there's two camps. There's camp number one, and the camp number one are the anti-vacationers. You know, you have the anti-vaxxers, the anti-vacationers. Vacation? Oh, no. That is against Torah. Not sure if it's us or perhaps it is. Let's see. But you have those in camp number one. Camp number one. Now, I just laughed about it. The truth is, is, is that, you know, camp number one, you know, at the protest, you know, with the signs, <laughs> you know, cancel vacation, cancel Benazimani, 
perhaps they have what to base themselves on. So let's take a look. Let's take a look before we go to camp number two. You have some Mari Makomas over here. Right, once again, Bar Hashem, we have a Torah. And the Torah gives us guidance on how to be able to look at every diff, every aspect of our lives. So we have over here a fascinating Yerushalmi. Believe we may have seen it again uh, previously in a different context, once upon a time in the Chabur. But we have a Yerushalmi in Peah. Shalu at Rebbe Yeshua. So they asked Rebbe Yeshua, Ma'u sheyilman adam es b'no yivanis. What's the din? Should a person teach their son Greek? So Amr Lahem, so Rabbi Yeshua says to them an amazing answer. He says, okay, you can. Sure, go ahead. Teach your son Greek. Just, it can't be during the day and it can't be during the night. You gotta love the humor there. Rabbi right? Yeshua, Hashem. Dikhtiv, I have a basuk. Begisa bayama malayla. We have in Sefer Yeshua. Begisa bayama malayla. We're very familiar with this with this term. That we should be involved in Torah, Yoim, and Melayla. So since we need to be involved in Torah, Yom of Melayla, so okay, when's when's teaching Greek gonna come into play? It's very simple. When it's not day and when it's not night. Zil Gamor, go figure it out. You figure out when to go do it. But Rabbi Ishmael, but what about the fact that we have a teaching from Rabbi Ishmael? Very foundational teaching. Here in work inspired. Ubacharta Bachayim, this pasuk that we find in Sefer Devarim, Ubacharta Bachayim, Moshe Rabbeinu says to Am Yisrael, I stand, stand before you, right? And here, now you have this choice in front of you. You have Chaim and you have Mavis, you have life and you have death. Ubacharta Bachayim, and you should choose life. So, what does that mean that you should choose life? So, as we discussed, we have this fascinating pshat from Rabbi Yishmael, which is not so fascinating when we understand Rabbi Yishmael. But he says, What is that that you should choose Chaim? Zu Omnos. That you should choose a profession. So the question back to Rabbi Yishmael is, Me'ata Asr the Lamed Es B'nai Omnos? Begin Dekhtir Vegisa Bayom Valayla. So you want to tell me now because it says in Yeshua Vegisa Bayom Valayla, you have to be learning Torah day and have to be learning Torah night. So now it should be Asr to learn Omnos. Rabbi Yishmael says, And we have other Marmakomas, right? That which we've seen, right? Which is a Chiv to learn in Omnus. So how are you going to tell me that I can't learn Greek for this reason? So the Yerushalmi continues and gives a different reason. But what we see from here is, is that had it not been for a, a Marmakom that's telling us that yes, when it comes to work, or when it comes to learning a profession, when it comes to work, we have a reason to be involved in something outside of Torah. We have to be learning Torah. So perhaps, where do we come up with this idea that if we're not, that we can now take vacation? And this is something, this, this, this mindset, and once again, not chas v'shalom, but all to be mezalzah, but just we need to understand it be'emes. We have to understand what's being shared over here. We have an amazing, an amazing, amazing pshat from the, from the Sefer HaMakna on Kedushin. And this is found, right, Kedushin and Lamed and Beis, where we have a teaching, we have a teaching, this teaching we've seen as well, right, a teaching from where we learn out the chiv of learning in Omnus. Right, teaching from Chizkia, right, one of one of the the Talmidim, one of the close Talmidim of one of the close Talmidim of um, of of Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, right? We spoke about this 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 inner circle that took place over there in Sipari. And Baruch Hashem, I had the opportunity, the opportunity to be able to to be at, at Chizkia's kever, to be able to be at Chizkia's kever. Rivchia Ubanov, that's what was, was, was slipping my mind. Rivchia Ubanov, it's an amazing cover in Tiveria. If you guys haven't been, Rav Hashem, we're going to take a Pilsner work inspired trip. We've been speaking about it now for a while to be able to go to the Kifr Tzadikim, not just any Kifr Tzadikim, but our teachers and our mentors in the Sugya. Rav Hashem, I've had the opportunity to go myself, but we're going to take a trip. Now, Rav Gersi's been there as well. We're going to take a trip together to be Rivchia Ubanov in Tiveria. Chizkia was one of his sons. 
close, close, close Talmud, close Talmud of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi. And Chizkiah teaches, being Jewish and Apostolic in Kohelas, where Ei Chaim Ima Isha Asher Ahavta. Did you experience life right, with your wife? Where Ei Chaim Ima Isha Asher Ahavta. There the Gemara and Kedushin teaches us from there, right, that we have a Chiv, right, we have a Chiv to also teach our, our sons, right, to teach our sons a trait. So let's see what the Sefer Machna says. So he says, Nira de'i b'tayra mayri kura yesh loymer asher ahavta. So if, once he's, he, what he's doing over here is he's referencing, he's referencing the, the two different ways that the Gemara um, presents to learn out this Pasuk. One way is to say, re'ei chayim im a'isha asher ahavta, which means if it's talking about isha mamish, Right, So the Gemara says, just like you need to teach, you have to marry, a father needs to marry off his, his son to an Isha, so too a father needs to teach his son a trade. And then another way the Gemara says is that Isha doesn't mean in Isha Mamish, Isha is also talking about Torah, right? which the Torah is called Isha, just like the father needs to teach their son Torah, also needs to teach his son a trade. Now, the Sefer Machna is working with this Pshat, and he goes on to say that this can help us to understand that which the Rush, right, and this is quite well known, that which the Rush speaks about. That why isn't it when it comes to Berchus Torah that we say in the morning that we don't say another Berchus Torah when if we stop learning? Right? And then we go to work, and then we come back to the base medrash. Why don't we say Berchas Sator again? Right? Like other brachos. So what the Rosh says over here is the reason why is Mishum De'enu Mesiach Daite. Because a person's not Mesiach is Das. He doesn't take his mind off of Torah. Da'afilu mu'oisek b'malach toi b'machsheves b'machsheves libo t'shukhasai l'shuv l'tarasai. Right? So the Sefer HaMachna, the Sefer HaMachna explains over here beautifully it's such strong lashonis. I remember when I saw this years ago. I was totally blown away. He says that when a person is working, when a person is working, he says, "Afilu imu oisek b'melachto machsheves libay b'tshukhasu l'shuv l'sayrasu." That even when a person is working, where's his heart, and where's his mind? His heart and his mind, his desire is to get back to the base mitzvah. Right, it's to connect again with the Torah in the base matches. And he says, we spoke about this more in depth in the end of This is beautiful. This, this Lashon over here, that we, we, we say that a person's day and night, it's not Dafka talking about somebody you might think. That someone that just learned Torah all day, somebody who sits in kolal. Why Because we have this pasuk in Tehillim, right? That we're, we, we're, it's, it's speaking about a person who's learning Torah. And whatever he does, he's going to be matzliach. So he says, Alma, what are we talking about? We're talking about over here a person who's working. So a person might think. Who is this person who is Yagiya Batara Yama Balayla, somebody who's sitting in Kolo? But somebody who's working, we can't call him somebody who's involved in Torah day and night. So says the Sefer Machna, no. We see it's talking about somebody that does work. Because even when a person is at work, his mind is thinking and is being mistaken about his Torah. What does it mean when it says isha, that a person should have its combination between chayim, which is his umnus, isha, which is Torah, that even when a person is involved in chayim, chayim, when a person is involved with his melacha, chayim, it should always be isha with Torah. Asher Ahavta, with the Torah that he loves. Afilu hachiyeh ima Torah machmas avaso eleh, beautiful pshat. Ima isha asher Ahavta, because isha Torah is something that a person loves. V'chukhaso yileshuv aleh, and he has this chuka, he has this chuka, to be able to go back to his Torah. 
So such a person, even when he's at work, his mind is always on Torah. He goes on to say, we won't see it inside, he says a fascinating thing. He says that to be mekayim in every way that you, in every path that you're involved, every place that you're involved in work to ayu, that you should always involve a kaddish baruch hu, yisharach and then as a result of that, you'll have atzlacha. So he says a person shouldn't think that if he's at work. And when he's involved in his parnasa, if he's not fully focused 100%, but there's a part of him which is still connected to his Torah, he may think he's not going to have atzlacha. He says, no, this pasta comes to tell us that you will have atzlacha. Now, how that works when a person's an employee working for someone else is different than if a person is self-employed. Right, because at the end of the day, there's Avodah Hashem and then there's Halacha. Right? So we have to understand everything needs to be in the context of Halacha. If a person's working for themselves, so then they have more freedom in terms of certain kavanas that they may have. We'll have a, a discussion with Rabbi Gerzi about this. It's a very, very subtle point. When a person's working for someone else, you know, a person's going to think, and you know, we, we see how Machbed Chazal were. They even said, you know, make shorter, sh- shorter davening, a shorter brech hazamazah, because we're concerned about stealing. Right? So a person needs to make sure, if he's working for someone else, that any sort of type of not being focused because he's thinking about the base measure so he's not being tricked right into falling into an Isser Gzela or the Isser Geneva but in B'chomech what we see from the Sefer Makhda along the lines of what we saw in the Yerushalmi is, is that if we're not at work our minds are in Tyra we're running back to the base measure even when we're at work we're thinking about Tyra so where's this idea of a person going on vacation when a person gets time off from work, his vacation is he goes back to the base measures. I mean, that, that's vacation. I know, ach, that's exactly what it is. Mishnah and others, Gimel, Perak Gimel, Mishnah Zayin, Rabbi Shimon Oimer, Amaharech Baderach. Here he's on a vacation, he's walking. Okay? I don't know, here I think he was just traveling. Rabbi Shoyne, what does he do? Avadi, he's learning Torah. What do you do when you're walking somewhere? And he says, ah, look at this beautiful view. Look at this beautiful tree. Right? Look at this beautiful landscape. He's taking it in. Strong Russian. He's, he's chayv for his own life. So it's like a chayv of misa. You have to understand, Mr. Hashem, we're going to unpackage this Marmakum to understand what's really being said here. But on face value, and this is the way that's the way that you see it's being explained by some of the Rishonim, it seems once again a very strong emphasis on a person's time and a person's focus being on Torah and not on something else. It's a fascinating maral I found. It's found in in, in Horius Yud, where the maral speaks about this word. Chofesh, this word chofesh. You know, people like to say, you know, we don't so Hebrew word. Where do we find this word chofesh? Chufsha. But this is the word that we use, right? For vacation. Vacation is translated, right? As chofesh, as chofesh. So the Maral says over here something very, very strong. He says, "Davar is that Indian muflag ma'od kilo nikra chofshi rachem etzora." Do you know who's considered to be the free one? Who's the chofshi one? Who's the one who's on vacation? The Metzorah. The Metzorah. He's the Chofshi one. Why? Because when everyone else, right, who's not outside of the camp, everyone else who's part of the cloud, Meshubad Lechavero. Kol Echad Meshubad Lechavero. Beautiful. Every person who's part of, of a community, is part of the cloud, we have a Shibud. By definition, being connected to a community and being connected to others means that we're not there just for ourselves. We're there for other people. Each person is there. But as Rabbi Gerzi just said, he just said this in last, uh, the last podcast we had, right? It's about the fact there's no self-made man, right? We're always relying on each other. Mashal, the ma'adavar doyme, says the ma'aral, halev hu melech al kol The lev, the heart, is the king of all of the limbs. Mishalech ha'parnasa v'achius l'chol e'varim. The lev sends, right, vitality, right, to all of the organs. U'v'shvil kach ha'lev misharet et chol e'varim b'yachad. What does it mean that it's the melech? Right, the melech means to be misharet. Right, it means to be of service. The Rebbe Gerzi always speaks about the importance, right, if we're living to be of service. So therefore this heart, 
which is the king, is serving the rest of the Evarim. Bishar Evarim, Mikablim Zemiza, and the rest of the Evarim as well as part of the process. They're all interconnected. They're receiving from another. So we can see that each one of the Evarim, each one of the limbs are, are, are helping us, subservient to one another. When we look at Knesset Yisrael, when we look at Am Yisrael, when we look at a community, we look at a tzibor, everyone is helping one another. It's beautiful. You can say that each one of us is an event because each one of us is there to be able to help the other. And the king, he's the greatest servant. He's the greatest ever, the Melech. But this Mitzvah, Shinema, Alav, Badar, Yashav, Machut, Machane, Moshevo. No, no, he's not part of the Klal. He's on his own. He doesn't have responsibilities towards anyone else. The only thing he needs to worry about is himself. He's worry free, responsibility free. He's on vacation. He's on vacation. Shunivdam in a Klal, Sharikhtiv, Badar, Yashav. He sits by himself. Zenek Rashu Chofshi. He is on Chofesh. He's on Chofesh. Kasher mufrash min aklau. Because he's totally separated from everyone else. Sha'az lo shayach loimer alav she'esh alav shibur kal. Then we can say, such a person doesn't have any shibur. So this is the way that the maral helps us to understand this concept of, of, of being on Chofshi. Of Chofshi. What about Tiulim? Right, another word which is used. They're very much here in Israel. I'm not sure if it's... I think even, even the Chutzar, it's going to Tiyul. They, they say trips? I don't know. They don't really say trips. Family outings. So here we have an Orchaz Tzadikim. The Orchaz Tzadikim. So this is a little bit of a snippet from Shara Ava. He says, V'od yeish Ava Sviit, Shviit, Shehi Ra'ah al Kol Ahavos. We have over here this type of an Ava. It's the worst of all of them. <laughs> okay, it's the worst of all of them. V'hi Ava Tzadanugim V'tzapnukim. People, they just love, they love, they love Oineg and Pinukim. I'm not sure actually the best way to translate. They love, you know, the, all the extras just to be able to have and just to be able to indulge. Just to be able to indulge. Kamoa, kegon achila, like eating, vishtia, and drinking. Vishar hanois, and the rest of the hanois. Kigon, like, znus, znus, right, immorality. Vitiulim, and going on tiulim, okay. There you have it, the Orch HaTzadikim, okay? T- you know, you do a Google search on Tiulim, this is what shows up. Okay, so it, it doesn't seem so positive. He wasn't really hanging out with the right word. It's the Tiulim. And then we have a mission in Ksuves. Mishn- if you guys are getting a little bit sweaty, just hold on, hold on, don't worry. We're, we're going to see the other side soon. Um, this, week's, this week's talk is sponsored by... <laughs> <laughs> the, the anti-vacation brigade. Um, okay, so um, she has been as Um <laughs> So then we have a Mishnah Ksuvis, and the Mishnah Ksuvis tells us it's speaking over here about different chiyuvim, different chiyuvim of a husband when it comes to oinas ishtay, right? When it comes to the relationship, the, the the relationship, the intimate relationship between a husband and one spouse. So there are different levels, different levels and amounts, right, of, of a chiyuv. So it depends as the Mishnah goes through what a person does, right, dependent on different jobs. So the Mishnah goes through people that are this type of a job, that type of a job, and then it has a category of a person called the tayalim, the, the, the people that go on tiulim. Okay, that's what they're called. So here's the, the, the Rambam. So the Rambam says the tayalim, hem abateilim. The people they're just uh, they do waste their time. They tell them she'en laem torach torach umasa mishum adam mishum adam. They don't have any responsibilities. None of them any work. Amu amu amunagim she'enam oiskim lo b'schar v'lo b'malacha. They're very spoiled people. They don't involved in any work. No responsibilities. Batala. So what we're seeing over here, what we're seeing over here to sum up. Right, is, is that if we look and we ask this question, what does the Torah say about what we should be doing? Even if, even if we need a break, maybe we don't. Maybe Shabbos is good enough. Maybe if we really keep Shabbos, Shabbos is good enough for us to be refreshed. We shouldn't ever need to take a break. But even if we do need to take a break, right, so then what's our break? Right, so then we would see our break should be to the base Medrash. 
right to the base medrash. I tell the wives, going to the base medrash. Or for yourself, you're going to the base medrash. <laughs> That's where you're going, sorry. This is where perhaps where we need to be. And what we're seeing is, is that this concept, or this, the, even the word of chofesh, right, the, this, the way that we see tiulim being reflected, would seem to be not such a positive thing, not something which finds its place in a positive light, in a positive light, when it comes to Torah. So that's camp number one. And then we have camp number two. <sighs> Take a deep breath, that was intense. Camp number two, they know how to do our vacation. Camp number two, like I mentioned before, we see this in front of our eyes, right? Is that we have developed and we have cultivated a whole entire society, a whole entire culture of from vacations. We just don't go on vacation. We know how to do a good. We have black culture vacations, right? We go to exotic places. We have cruises, right? We go snorkeling, right? We go skydiving. Everything's got kosher. Don't worry, you'll be anywhere in the world, you have glad kosher food, daf yoimi, everything. Everything. And there's a culture, once again, not to be masala, but to have a little bit of a laugh. Right? We made a culture of room vacations. The best wine, the best food, the best places. Right? We do everything. Mahadrin, mina mahadrin. When it comes to our vacations. So we have camp number one, and we have camp number two. And if I could suggest what's taking place is, is that because of camp number two, that's why camp number one is so angry. Because of camp number two, that's why camp number one is so angry. So we have to understand. We have to understand what is the approach, what is the mahalach. Because I saw, I saw, and I saw a maisa, I saw an article that I was going to bring in next time, so you can see it inside. But I saw there was a story that there was a certain chevra, a certain chevra of, of Mamish of Ayyub Hashem, that they put together a kol khoire, where they wanted, I don't remember at what point of the year it was, they wanted, they were very upset about vacation. They're very upset that they, they wanted to have a certain bein azmanim, a certain bein azmanim, a vacation for, for the yeshivas. And they were very upset, they put together a kol khoire, and they brought it to Rav Steinman. And Rav Steinman looked at it, <laughs> and Rav Steinman was like, what, you want, to take, you, you, you want to take that away from them? He's like, you want to take that away from them? Even this you want to take away from them? <laughs> okay, I guess they turned away and went to find someone else to sign it. But we have to understand, what was Rosh Steinman saying? What was Rosh Steinman saying? Right, and what, there needs to be, there needs to be a depth of understanding, of understanding this whole entire sukya. So what we're going to be doing, Mesiyat HaDashmaya, in this unit, is first and foremost, we're going to understand that underneath the topic of vacation is really the topic of understanding downtime. What does the Torah say about downtime? Right? What does Yiddishkeit say about downtime? Right? Is downtime something that we can just achieve through Shabbos? right through Chagim, and Bessel Hashem, we're going to explore and understand this. But the second point that we're going to work on is to see, is this, does the Torah have wisdom, does the Torah have a Chachma on how to do vacation right? Because I know at least I've been, but perhaps you've been there, where you've taken a vacation, they call it a vacation, it wasn't really a vacation. You come back from your vacation being perhaps even more exhausted and more wiped out and more stressed than you were before you went on vacation. So does the Torah have a chachma? Does the Torah have a chachma and how to be able to do our vacation right? Right. And third of all, how we're able how we're able to steer away from pitfalls. How to be able to steer away from those 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 pitfalls in which a person who has a positive intention that takes on vacation could end up going down that route, going down that pathway, right, in which he's not going to achieve the desired goal, right? It's what the camp one is screaming about, right? So if we're going to go on vacation, we're going to be involved in vacation, what are the steps and what are the aids that we can be taking so we could be matzliach in taking the vacation how HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to. Bez Hashem will continue next week. we we'll continue in our next week at our next Chabur. It's going to be very, very exciting to be able to see the Mar Makomos, how the Torah 
and it's tremendously empowering, validating, and will give us a lot of chizuk. Until then, enjoy your day at work.